we are back and it's time for Definitive Ranking, a recurring segment where we take a Nintendo topic and give our own personal top five lists. Kyle, since I just reviewed Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble and last week gave us an announcement of an all new Mario Party game, I want to get your top five party games. So it can be either franchises or individual games. It's your list, so you can do whatever you want with it. I can tell you that I went franchises if you want to gotcha. go that route. But otherwise, uh, all you. Uh, yeah, obviously, number five. I mean, do I even really need to say it? Obviously, it's South Park Chef's Love Shack. We all know it. We all played it. <laughs> we all love it. And we I definitely did that didn't. We definitely all owned that. And for some reason, never owned a copy of Mario Party. I don't know why that happened in my life. Uh, I can <laughs> close down the sarcasm now. I Yeah, I, that was the one party game I had. Like, a, it was like a family friend bought it for me for Christmas or something, where it's like they probably got it out of some discount bin. But it was like a it was a Mario Party inspired game where you did mini games and stuff. And it was but it was South Park. And I it was one of those I didn't play. I wouldn't say I played it a lot, but I mean, I would I would boot it up because it's like, I well, this is one of my, you know, f- handful of N64 games. I've I've beaten God. Ocarina of Time to death. I'll play some Chef's Love Jack. <laughs> Whoa. oh my god it would actually be weird to go back and revisit that game i bet it's just awful i bet it's like unplayable <laughs> hey i will if you do that i will join you for that episode of replay we should do that i would totally be that would be funny oh god is uh, that even like a, like would we even be able to play that on youtube at this point because i'm sure it was pretty uh pretty raunchy yeah it's got to be rough probably yeah i'll you know what i should dig it up sometime that would be fun to revisit i wonder if it's on gog or something that'd be crazy um yeah so number five just just to throw a, a wrench in there uh number four i i actually spent a, i think a lot of people did this too um and you know there's like there's a, what is a party game what is a multiplayer game there's certainly like multiplayer games that i played a lot more but i just don't feel like they're party games but uh fusion frenzy on xbox oh, it wasn't i love fusion frenzy it wasn't even that like my friends and i would play the the G- fusion frenzy right what it was this is silly but like we played so much halo and then I think it might have this is seems crazy in retrospect, but I feel like it might have been on that even on the Halo disc. There was a demo for Fusion Frenzy or I had it on the hard drive or something. I for whatever reason, I didn't need to take I don't remember swapping discs, but um, we would they, there was like it was like funny because the Fusion Frenzy demo was just like a couple of mini games that you could kind of just like immediately jump into without worrying about like the larger game. So we would just play like, you know, the one fusion frenzy game where you're like running up the spiral. And that would be like the <laughs> cooldown after playing a million rounds of halo. We would play like that one mini game. And I looked it up and it does appear to have been on the halo combat evolved disc. Okay, That's that is purely why, you know, cause we're like, <laughs> it's like, Oh man, we've been playing halo for hours. And it's like, well, let's, let's do something different, you know? And then it would, <laughs> uh let's see number three nintendo land i feel like you can oh wow the game for the wii u kind of a funky weird underrated nintendo party game like there's a couple of great games on there there's mario run i think it's called actually i might have the name wrong where it's like you were just like chasing each other on this map and then like the character with the game pad would have the camera on them so you could like see their face reacting on the on the tv screen as they were like running away it's one of the reasons i don't think nintendo land would ever be ported to switch or anything like that because it's like it really was the game that used all the sort of elements of the the wii u console like the microphone and the camera and stuff like that i also like nintendo land because it like it had a bunch of different Nintendo franchises. Like there were a bunch of Metroid games. There were a bunch of Zelda games. There were a bunch of F zero games. There were a bunch of Mario games, you know? And I like I liked that sort of um, mashup, that kind of amusement park approach to, uh, to Nintendo franchises. Yeah. Um, and then number two um, is a warrior where smooth moves. Okay. Me. Again, like I don't know. It's like, is it a party game or is it just like a multiplayer game? I don't know. It's semantics, but there's some crossover. Yeah, and you had to beat the single player to access that, which it was I thought always was annoying. Oh, but really? I don't remember that. I I could be wrong about that, but I feel like you had to play a lot of WarioWare to uh, to access the multiplayer mode, oh, and then that was like a staple for for a long time was playing warrior where smooth moves with friends um and, and like sort of the party situation 
on last week's episode, I talked about how I had a friend over and we were playing WarioWare Smooth Moves in the same college apartment that I read the Arkham Asylum uh, cover story cover story from Game Informer. Yeah. And we had a, a few adult beverages and it was the closest I'd ever come to just completely obliterating one of my Wii remotes because like <laughs> it slipped out of one of our hands and we just like watched in horror as it soared through the air. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, that was a man, that was a problem before when that console came out. People probably forget. Uh but yeah, Warrior Wear Smooth Moves is so good. I actually haven't played the multiplayer stuff with the new Warrior Wear in a party setting really yet. Yeah. Like I still want to do that because I bet it I bet it's like as fun. You know, I bet it I bet it uh is comparable. Um, but I'm just at a different point in my life where I'm not like in a dorm with people around, you know. You know what sucks? WarioWare Smooth older? Moves oh. came out almost 18 years ago. Is it really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Uh, <laughs> and then number one is my franchise pick, which is Jackbox. It's just like everyone can play it there's some game somewhere in that batch that's like going to appeal to everybody if you have a phone you can play it's mm -hmm. like it's just a, a brilliant game that is consistently fun and it also doesn't really feel unfair because it's like less it's less focused on like who's winning and more focused on like let's make sure everyone's like laughing and having a good time like there's not there's a score but like it's so secondary to everything else. Unlike, you know, like Mario Party, which wasn't on my personal list. I've never really enjoyed Mario Party is a game that feels like you're trying really hard to be strategic in a sort of whirlwind of chaos to the point where it, like I, I, I rarely have fun <laughs> you know, um, because I'm not a particularly competitive person. And I feel like Mario Party kind of makes you competitive by design. Uh, but yeah, Jackbox, I think is just it's just the best party game. I, I just don't think you can do any better than Jackbox. It's a solid choice. I mean, uh, and it, I believe the only entry on my list that overlaps. Really? Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, not WarioWare? <clears throat> WarioWare and Super Smash Brothers are my two honorable mentions here. Yeah. See, Smash Brothers doesn't, I wouldn't have, I, that would have been a number one if I thought of it as a party game, but yeah, I guess <clears throat> I don't. Yeah. Anyway. The, my definition of a party game is a, like just a game that you can like bust out and people can easily jump on and just like, whether they're hardcore gamers or like somebody who's like, oh yeah, I played Switch a couple times, like they can just jump in and have a good time, even if like they're doing awful. Like on Super Smash Brothers, you could be like, yeah, you join my team. I've played like you know six hundred hours of Super Smash Brothers. We'll still have a good time. We'll put the computer on. Like one of them is going to be on hard, one of them is going to be on easy, so you can have a punching bag as well. Yeah. Um. Or like you know you can team up like a really good player with a really bad player against another really good player and another really bad player and have a good time. So that that's kind of where I'm, I look at it, but because of like that, those caveats, I didn't put it on my list, even though I think it's a very, very good game. Right. Uh, but we'll start there. Number five, I'm going to put Mario party just because like, I feel like a lot of people have had great multiplayer sessions playing Mario party. It has party in the name. <laughs> uh, it's just a, I don't know, it's a solid party game to bust out whenever you want to to play some some multiplayer with a group of friends. It doesn't matter how experienced they are at uh, video games. Right. I'm surprised it's number five for you. I just assumed it would be higher. You know, I didn't I didn't worry about not having a Mario Party on my list, you know, because <laughs> like, yeah, I'm sure it'll be on Brian. Uh, number four for me, Overcooked. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, what a fun yeah. game. My parents play Overcooked. Like, we'll go over to the, like, I'll, I'm visiting my family next week. And I'm sure that at one point they'll be like, do you have Overcooked? Because I'm bringing my Switch <laughs> with me. And I am almost certain. I mean, almost all these games are ones that I will probably bust out at some point with my my family uh, over the course of the next week. So uh, Overcooked is my number four. That You know, just a really fun, frantic what it like working in the kitchen i would want to say simulator because it starts off like okay yeah we're, we have to serve these dishes as fast as possible and then it turns into like isn't it like the apocalypse has happened and now yeah, we have to <laughs> things are like yeah th that gets really crazy in two in particular and like, like yeah. these the building is collapsing and we have to like throw the dish across the chasm and i don't know yeah, it's just yeah. like no overcooked good. that's a good answer I, if, if in retrospect if i had considered that like as a as a party game, it would have made my list for sure. 
Uh, this is one I will not be playing when I visit my family because it requires a lot of plastic uh, instruments to come with me. Rock Band. Yeah. See, again, had, like, yeah, I didn't really think of it as a party game, but it totally could fit that for sure. I've had Rock Band parties, Kyle. I've had uh, it was. Let's see. Who was the most recent one? It was uh, a lot of former Game Informer folks. Blake Hester, Ben Hansen. Uh, I think Alex Van Aken was at the most recent one. Suriel Vasquez came over. Yeah. Just uh, this this basement was just populated with with <laughs> former Game Informer editors, former and current Game Informer editors. Uh, um, well, I've had Left for Dead parties. Would you consider Left for Dead a party game? <laughs> no, but that, that's weird. No, no, no. <laughs> Get out of here with that. Uh, no, but Le- I mean, Left for Dead's a very fun yeah. co-op game. Yeah. Um, number th- what am I on? Two. Uh, three. Three. Right? Mario? No, three was rock. Oh, band. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Two, two, two. Uh, two, Jackbox Party Pack. Oh, like you said, you anybody with a phone on. can jump on. Anybody can uh, fire that up. Have a good time. Lots of fun prompts and situations that people get put into. It was a real serious contender for number one, but number one for me. This might be another one of those ones where you're like, oh, I never thought of that as a party game. I always thought of that as a multiplayer game. Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. Yeah, I, I, I thought about it. It's like I just I feel like it's a racing game. I don't, but yeah, I mean it's totally it could totally be a party game. You know, so, I mean it's I, if you know, yeah, I bet people are gonna have a lot more fun with that than Mario Party. <laughs> so I had a party uh, last month. No, earlier this month, literally the first weekend of this month, and I had a bunch of people over, and you know I was like, okay, well I have all these arcade one ups. People are gonna want to like play those. The uh, one guy played a few matches of Street Fighter on the arcade one up. Another guy played uh, some Mortal Kombat. Everybody was like, hey, you have Mario Kart 8, right? Can we play that? And then like (laughs) they like six people were just trading the Joy-Cons around playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for like an hour and a half. And I was like, all right, well, I got to go like entertain the other people. So uh, (laughs) yeah, yeah, I mean, Mario, Mario Kart is, yeah, you're, you're, it's always going to be a winner like a hundred percent of the time. Absolutely. So that's why I got my number one spot. I mean, I've had a lot of fun playing Jackbox party pack and uh, those other types of rock band. I've, I've had parties with almost all of these games. Uh, So any of them are really solid number one picks, but yeah, that's my list. uh, And that's, the end of definitive ranking, Kyle. We did it. But before we wrap up, I Glad do want to Jeff's acknowledge love Shack made it on there. Chef's Love Shack. Oh God, <laughs> I, I don't. You you left off Mario Party for Chef's Love Shack. I know. Look, it was a it was a bit. It was a specific. I went for the joke, and it was worth it. 